Hello, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about observer bias. Um, so observer bias is when the bias of the researcher affects what the researcher is choosing to observe or ignore. Um, so if the observer expects something to happen in a certain way or they expect only a certain behavior to be relevant to their study, then they might choose to only observe that certain behavior and ignore others that they expect not to be relevant. Um, so it's important that we be aware of that bias and carefully consider all the different behaviors that might possibly be relevant to the study. Um, observer bias can also happen if the bias of the researcher leads to errors in identifying or recording behavior. Um, so it could be uh, not necessarily a conscious choice to observe this behavior versus that behavior, but it could be a matter of making mistakes when observing the chosen behavior that they're observing. So they might observe the chosen behavior and incorrectly identify the behavior, uh, incorrectly record how the behavior happened, um, or incorrectly interpret what the behavior might mean. Uh, when the bias of a researcher leads to specific methods of observation or data collection, that is also an example of observer bias. Um, so for example, if the observer expects only a view from this direction to be relevant, then they might set up a camera to record from that particular angle. Whereas if they weren't biased, they might realize that a view from multiple angles or there might be another angle that is equally relevant. Um, and so their bias led them to only focus on what they expected to be relevant. Um, so expectancy effects are the result of observer bias. So it's basically the effects of the observer having an expectation about what the results will be or about what is going to be relevant to observe for the study. Um, so it can happen if the observer is aware of the hypothesis. So what do we think is going to be the right answer to the research question? Um, and if the observer is aware of previous studies that are related or maybe looked at the same um, behaviors or were making similar types of observations. Um, so an observer can be biased because their knowledge of previous research. Um, so in general, most people see what we expect to see rather than what is actually there. And so that's kind of a normal human bias. <laughs> Um, and that we need to work on controlling so that it doesn't bias our research. Uh, we also tend to interpret what we see according to what we expect it to mean or what we expect to see or our previous beliefs. Uh, and also we might plan methodology or data collection according to what we expect to happen. So if based on all the previous research, we expect the study to go a certain way, that might influence how we design our methodology or how we plan for our data collection or analysis even. Um, and that would all be an example of observer bias. All right, so here's a specific example of a study about observing the movement of worms. Um, so say we have a group of students and we have a group of worms that are all essentially exactly the same. So half of the students are told that they should observe the worms and see how much they move, count how many times they turn their head. Half the students are told that there should be a high rate of movement. And the other half of the students are told that there should be a low rate of movement. Now, even though all the worms are essentially identical, the groups should be about the same. They're just worms. They're the same kind of worms and everything. Um, but because of what the students expected to see with the worms moving, um, the group that's told to expect a high rate of movement recorded a much higher rate of movement than the group who expected to see a low rate of movement. They interpreted the movements of the worms differently in accordance with what they expected. So those are expectancy effects. Uh, so how do we minimize observer bias? The most important part here is that we recognize that observer bias could be present. Observer bias is always possible when we're doing any kind of research that involves any type of observation. 
Um, so we need to always recognize that that can be present so that we can try to be as unbiased as we possibly can. We want to work against our biases. We want to question all of our expectations and assumptions about whatever it is that we are observing. Um, a really great strategy here, if it's available to you, is to keep the observers blinded to the hypothesis or goal of the study. So if the person that is doing the observing doesn't know what they're expecting, doesn't know what the hypothesis is, so what you expect to be the answer to your research question, and doesn't know what the goal of the study is, then we're going to get much less biased observation. Um, and then also it can help to use automated recording equipment. So like setting up a video camera or something to record behavior. Um, so that can help, but it is still vulnerable to observer bias because as I mentioned earlier, the bias of the observer might dictate where the camera is set up or how you're observing what you're seeing. So it can help to some extent, um, and especially if you're sharing that video or that recorded data um, with multiple observers that can help to kind of balance out uh, the observer bias among the different researchers. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.